Yeah, after I said, uh, transcribed that, uh, I uh, printed 150 copies using a mimeograph machine. Yeah, Earth people manifest. So, uh, and I spontaneously just gave it out intuitively to uh, strangers on the streets of Bombay, street poet, pure street poet. And uh, this raw, unedited, uh, juicy Earth People Manifesto, if you want to read the original document, it's on our earthpeopleworldheadquarters.com website. Yeah. Well, the original tape cassette, just one, huh? Um, of my renunciation uh, moment, I gave to a hippie friend named Jenny, a guitarist from Florida. And I said, uh, take it to the United States for me. It was kind of like tossing a baby into a life raft when I, as the creator, it was too late for me to save myself, but toss a baby on there, gives her the chance to live on. Huh? So I tossed that tape cassette to Jenny. And because uh, I figured wandering aimlessly uh, in India, I'd let lose it. You know, Zato lifestyle, okay. But before returning to the United States, I mean, you're also free, uh, do whatever whim, spiritual whim blows, she ended up traveling to the South India, and becoming a devotee of, that's right, not the Raja Guru. Yeah, and, uh, well, unbeknownst to me, I would even never heard of him yet, uh, the fervent disciples of not the Raja Guru, they were religiously tape recording him on their little tape recorder systems, but oops, they ran out of blank tapes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer, J Jenny dutifully sacrificed my tape cassette to be recorded over <laughs> with the words of not to Roger Guru. What are the odds? This was months before I even knew not that Roger Guru existed. Okay? Or Gary Davis or the world government. <laughs> months before. And my most precious tape of my entire life was recorded over with the words of who was to become my guru too. Yeah, I mean, 100% uh, unaware of the world citizen movement. As I went through my private spiritual metamorphosis, you know, to become an earth person. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. I mean, obviously, spiritual forces from planes too subtle for us to see with our gelatinous gore orbs we call eyes were weaving their master plan to sink us all up. Well, fast forward three years, and uh, Gary Davis, the founder of the World Citizen Movement, and I rendezvous uh, in, in California, uh, and he stays at my place in Bellinas, a kind of re re rebel, poetic, Lots of marijuana seen, uh, you know, in our north of San Francisco. Bolinas, wild scene back then, and still is. Yeah, Bohemian Oceanside Village. Yeah. Well, ever fr uh, uh, vigilant, you know, Gary Davis to mint fresh world citizens. Uh, Gary Davis issues world passports to all my friends. All my countercultural friends, yeah, he carries blank world passport, seal stamps in his business briefcase. <laughs> Most of them couldn't pay the 20 bucks, he didn't care. 
Uh, uh, on his way back to fly to the East Coast, I'm escorting Gary to the San Francisco airport. We're on Market Street, the main street in San Francisco, and uh, we're at an unex uh, un, uh, exceptional table at Burger King, and Gary gets out his briefcase and gives me an updated world passport issued in Burger King on Market Street. Uh, well, uh, why? Why all this special attention to me? You know, he's got like hundreds of thousands of followers. Well, Gary recognized that uh, besides himself, I was the only human since him to absolutely walk this stateless person for life path. It was a spiritual necessity. It was obsession. We had no choice. Ever since he stormed the United Nations when he was just 24, 27, he blew out at 27. I blew out in Madras at 24. In, in Gary's eyes, I was, in fact, world citizen number two. He did his thing. 27 years went by. I did my thing. Yeah, so uh, he gave me. He commissioned me as the world government representative for the state of California and gave me the CDs. How that works. Oh, I still have those. Uh, as priceless souvenirs. Uh, well, I was deeply touched, of course, and, but I felt spiritually ambivalent about walking his walk. Uh, and after meditating on the possibility, I finally declined his offer. Why? Uh, well, like I said, I had come to my own realization, independent uh, insight, uh, that I was a world peace innovator. I'd never heard of him until 1971 in Goa, India, when I was 24, six months after my renunciation blowout event in Madras, the day the Earth People Movement began. Mm. Hmm. What a major crossroads in my life. Whew.